Um, I believe uh, I believe it's an honor, it's a privilege to be here. Uh, I love working together with, uh, with Pastor Paul, for sure. It was uh, it was good. It's also uh, very privileged and honored that uh, got invited by your pastors. Um, I said something last night, so I'll repeat it because some of you were not here. Um, I believe very, very firmly it is a good thing to call your pastor a pastor. He said, why? Because why, why does he not listen to my first name? Well, of course, he knows his first name, right? It's just as me. My wife calls me Rolf every single day. So I have no problem with my first name whatsoever. I am truly Rolf. But for my kids, I am not Rolf. If, if, because if they see me as Rolf, they will get Rolf. Rolf will not take him to soccer, right? Because their friends don't, right? They just meet at soccer, but their friends won't pick him up and take him to soccer. And their their friends don't give him any money. If they want to buy something, they need to buy it themselves. If they want me as dad, they call me dad. Now, I don't have to explain this to my kids because they call me dad. It is a good thing. It has nothing to do with pride or with title. Pastor is not a title. It is a function. It is a function that... Uh, Paul said is the fivefold ministry and the fivefold ministry is called to equip the saints. So that's you. It has nothing to do with that a pastor is of more value than a member of the church. It's a function. Let's call the eyes the eyes, the arms the arms, the legs the legs and not get confused. We're not all the same. We're not the same at all. My eyes are not the same as my toes. It's stupidity to think that way. They're of equal value. Yes, you know, it's my body. And in the body of Christ, we are of e equal value, but we are not the same. I'm sorry to say so, but it's, it's, it's very good to know this. So when we call someone with the function that they have, that anointing will start working for us. So if you want the anointing of Rolf, by all means, call me Rolf. It doesn't bother me because I'm wrong. But if you want the anointing that I carry as a leader, as a 5 ministry, then call me by my name. Now, it's not about me because I am leaving today, but your pastors are still here. It is a good thing, and not just to call them pastor, but to see them as your pastor. And you will see that the anointing that flows to you will change. It will change in, in the way you're going to receive from them. So it's a good thing. It has nothing to do with worship or whatsoever. I call my doctor a doctor. Yeah. I don't actually. I don't even know his name. <laughs> I just call him doctor. I never go to the doctor. Maybe that's why I don't. But I have a doctor. I just don't know his name. So, but when I see him, I say, "Well, hello, doctor." Yeah. Right. Nothing wrong with that. So it's a good thing. It has nothing to do with worship. I know some people went overboard with their titles. I've been to Africa many, many, many times. I've been to Nigeria ten times, and and they ask me for my title. I'm like, yeah, whatever. Right? I just I said, call me Pastor Wolf. No, 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 it's, not, it's, 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 it's no worries. Pastor is a leadership term in the Old Testament. I just carry that on to the New Testament. I'm not a shepherd per se, uh, but I am responsible uh, in the body of Christ for for my metron for those people that I'm called to. So, but in Africa they they are very hung up on titles, and uh, so I started making fun of them. And I said, well, obviously pastor is not enough in Africa, right? That that means nothing. If you're a pastor, you're nobody. So that doesn't work. A prophet, everybody's called a prophet already. So I said, then you know, need to be highly super anointed prophet or something. Prophet of the Most High, right? Like there's a prophet of the Less High. I don't know. <laughs> right? Or or apostle or chief of apostles and. You know, they they agreed to call me chief of bishops, and I just shake my hand, I shake my hand, on it, whatever. So this is such stupidity. So that's not what this is about, right? So it's not about demanding that people call us a certain way. It is the function that works. As a wife, it is good to see your husband as a husband. Yeah. As a husband, it's good to see your wife as a wife. Not as a woman, as a Amen. wife. Amen. You will start looking at each other very differently. All right. I don't want to take too much time for that, but I believe that is very important. A little bit about me. Um, Pastor Paul and I are both uh, privileged to, to be part of the network that uh, your pastors are, are most probably going to be part of as well. Um, it's not that that network is better than any other network, even though I think it's better than any other network. But uh, we're just part of what God is doing around the world. So it's not that we're saying we, we are better than anyone else. What I do believe is that God wants to raise a generation of people that know how to live supernaturally. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So I've believed this for years. I've prophesied this for years that God is going to raise up. 
the church, not just a few individuals. We will always have the fivefold ministry. We will always have pastors, prophets, apostles, etc. We will always have those, but it's not just those ministries that walk in the supernatural. It's everyone in the church Amen. that should walk Amen. in the supernatural Amen. and know what to do. But because there's a lot of people out there saying it, you have to be trained to do this in the right way. Yeah. To do this under authority and especially in the church. In our church, we have certain rules. I don't just want anyone just to lay hands, but we do train people, especially in your Metron, at your place of work, to go out and show those people that Jesus is alive. Amen. Right? So I believe that God wants you to do that as well. That's not really the message of today, but that just shows you a little bit uh, who we are. We have a church just uh, outside of Amsterdam in Holland. We're going to move uh, to Amsterdam uh, most probably this year. Um, we have a good work there. Uh, we know what Europe is about. It's challenging. Uh, if people ask me where I'm from, I always I don't really know what to answer. Are, we, are you from Holland? Well, yes. Are you from America? Well, yes, but I wasn't born in either country. So I was born in Germany, then moved to Holland, Dutch parents, and then later on I moved to America and I married a wife from South Korea. Right. So if you ask me, where am I from? I, I, I don't know. I, it's just a very long story. And it shows you what kind of people we are. Uh, the nations of the world are in our heart. We are missionaries at heart. We're not just pastors of a local church, even though we are. Um, and I, I really love people, but I love people that are working and plowing in countries where it's not easy to build churches. Right? Some people, they say, um, you know, go where you are celebrated. No, you need to go where you're cold. Um, and I'm glad, you know, there's a lot of people, they, they kind of don't, you know, they don't really want to start something in Europe, in England, because it's hard. Yeah, it's tough. we got our work cut out for us. That's why you need a certain type of people to build a church. That's why they're a little rougher and a little, a little more grunt to them if they, if they need to build it. And that's why you need to celebrate that in your pastors as well. Right? There's a reason, because otherwise they can't build what God wants to build. Yeah. Um, so my message today... Um, by the way, my wife is preaching right now, I think, or she's almost done, or is done. Yeah, that was one hour later there. Oh, she's almost done, or done. Well, it's my wife. You don't know if she's done. <laughs> uh, see, my wife is a very good, very strong preacher. Uh, she, she told me today what she was going to speak about, and I was so surprised. She said that I'm preaching grace. I'm like, what? Because that's not generally the message that my wife would preach. Uh, she's very, very confronting, very prophetic. So I was very surprised. I'm wondering what uh, what happened back home in, in our church. <laughs> um, but anyways, uh, we are both uh, uh, going to Ethiopia this week, so please keep us in your prayers. Um, I'm going to be speaking about the challenges to establishing and building. Um, Psalms 92 verse 12 says this. So listen, this I believe this is a message about building. It's building... A new work, it's building a, a work in the kingdom, it's building marriage, it's building a business, you can take it for that. But especially, I want to believe I, this message is meant prophetically for this church, for your pastors, and for you as well, to understand the season that you are in, to understand what needs to be overcome. Because sometimes we can go into a certain mentality, right, that grunt, because we have been plowing so long. We have been going through such a rough time. You take on a certain attitude and we need to make sure that we always uh, remain um, friendly. We always remain soft towards people, towards God. We always uh, need to stay encouraged. We always need to know that God has the best plan for us. Right? And I know sometimes it can be tough. Um, you know, when you've been a Christian for many years and, and you haven't seen the breakthroughs that you wanted in your life or in your marriage or in your business, I just want you to hold on because the promises of God are true. Amen. The promise of, promises yeah. of God are true. Do not let go. Right? You might need to learn how you need to change certain things in your life. You might have to, uh, might, might have to add some things in your life, subtract certain things in your life, but don't let go of the promises because they are true. The Bible says in Psalms 92 verse 12, the righteous shall flourish like the palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. And those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. Amen. This is an extremely important verse because in Europe there's, a, there's a, a trend, right? You don't have to really go to church. I'm just encouraging you. I don't have enough time to speak about it. But it's extremely important 
to go to your local church and not to fly from one to the other because this is where you need to grow roots. If this is your church, this is where you grow roots. Yeah. There's always things that you will be able to criticize, but that's not your purpose. Your purpose is to grow roots so you can start bearing fruit. You're not just in church to get blessed. You are in church to learn how to be a blessing to the people in the church and to be uh, to uh, to go outside, yeah. right? Yeah. You're supposed to be a, a fruit-bearing tree. Amen. That's why we go to church, not just to be blessed. Now, by all means, you'll get blessed. But that's not the purpose of why you are here. The purpose why you are here is to be trained, is to be equipped to take this world for Jesus Christ. Amen. They shall forth bring forth fruit even in old age. Verse 14 says, they shall be fat and flourishing. So that's the purpose that God has for you or the goal that God has for you that you are blessed. Right? Amen. So for that, you need to be planted in the house of the Lord. It is important to be planted and not to forsake the assembly together. The reason why we come to church is not just to be blessed, but to be a blessing to one another. We need to learn to encourage one another, right? I don't know, uh, I don't know bricks as well as I know, uh, I know Dutch people. But in Holland, we like to criticize. Somehow, we are very easy in in being critical about other people. All, uh, and, and Dutch people generally are very blunt. They even tell you in their face. They're not very good in taking criticism, by the way. It's very surprising because you think that people that is easy in criticizing people, they would be, you know, they would be very easy in receiving it too, but they're not. Then they get offended, right? And in Dutch, there is a there is a saying, don't make a murdering pit of your heart, meaning whatever is in, just throw it out. Just give it to people. And I said, no, now you're making someone else's heart a murdering pit. You're just spewing all your, your criticism. You need to speak what is right. Right? And the yeah. Bible speaks clearly about this. We need to build and encourage one another. Yeah. The Bible teaches us about building a work. So I'm just laying a foundation right now. The Bible speaks about building a work. The Bible speaks about building a marriage, building a business. So I'm just speaking about building, but I, I, you can take it for your personal life. But just know it is also a prophetic word for your church. Amen. That's what you need to know. Take it for your marriage. Take it for your business or someone else, but this is a prophetic message for this church. Um, let the uh, let them who have ears hear what the Spirit is saying. Yeah, man. Okay, God wants to do something, uh, but are we ready to go further with Him? Mm -hmm. uh, well, we can, yeah, yeah, and yeah. I don't want you to just say yes. I mean, it's good to say yes, but I want you to ponder and say, "Well, am I ready? Am I ready to go on and go further with God?" Because I believe that the work that is ahead of you is a great work. Not just that it will be wonderful and that it will be great. That's easy to prophesy. You will be wonderful and you will be great. But if you're going to be wonderful and you're going to be great, I can promise you, I can prophesy this, the work will be hard. Right? Revival is work. Revival is work. Right? So, I mean, the presence is not work. The presence is easy. But that will bring certain things that you will need to do. The Bible says our mission, one of the parts of the mission that we have is described Differently in different verses. But in Matthew 10 verse 7. Jesus said as you go. Not if you go. He said as you go. And we always go. Because you go to the groceries. You go to work. You go to your mom. You go to your dad. You go to school. Right? So all of us go. Correct? Yeah, yeah. Oh, you yeah, do need yeah, to respond. Yeah, correct? Yeah, yeah. Otherwise I think you fell asleep. I'm going to start over. Because then you miss it. Right? So we're all going. Right? Yeah. We're all going somewhere. I don't know where you're going. But you're going somewhere. And that's what he's saying. Doesn't matter where you're going. He said as you go. Preach. Saying the kingdom of God is at hand. So that's all of our job. Our job is to preach the kingdom. Amen. Not just my job. It's your job. Amen. As a member of the body of Christ. It's your job to preach the kingdom. And then he says. Heal the sick. Cleanse yeah. the leper. Yeah. Raise the dead. And yeah. cast out devils. That's yeah. the mission that the body of Christ has. Not just this build, in this building. You are the church. Meaning this is your mission. That is our assignment. And that's the move that we are a part of. Yeah. So why do we want to be part of the movement of the supernatural? Is because we believe that the supernatural needs to be raised. You know, though we have seen miracles before, and most of you believe in miracles, there has been a shift now. I have preached and prophesied for years that the plan of God, that the next move of God would be the church... The regular members of the church yeah. rising up yeah. and carrying the supernatural power Amen. of God. So that's yeah. the purpose of us coming together. 
so that you all become vessels of the glory. No, not only enjoy the presence, but start carrying it. Right? Yeah. That's the purpose. So we have to start building that. It doesn't just happen automatically. Everything about God is supernatural. I had a message in, in our church a little while back, a couple of months back, that I, I preached about, you know, there's some people that don't believe in the supernatural in the church. Don't get distracted easily. I can see that you got to get distracted when somebody gets up. It's always, sometimes it's better to close your eyes in church. Okay? So it's okay. They, there's people that will take care of business, so it's all right. Just pay attention to the word. But there's some people, they, they don't believe in the supernatural of God. You cannot be a Christian and not believe in the supernatural. Yeah, it's yeah, absolutely yeah. impossible. Yeah. Because the birth of Jesus Christ was supernatural. Yes, the life of Jesus Christ was supernatural. Yeah, yeah. The death of Jesus Christ, and especially the resurrection of Jesus Christ, was supernatural. Yeah, the appearance yeah, yeah. to his disciples was supernatural. Yeah. The, the ascension to heaven was supernatural. Now yeah. he's seated at the right hand of the yeah, Father, it's and it's supernatural. Right? Now he gave a mission to his church to do the supernatural, yeah. and there's going to be a new heaven and a new earth which is supernatural before that time he's going to come back returning as king it, that's supernatural everything about god is supernatural yeah. if yes. you don't believe in the resurrection right you're not a christian yeah you cannot be i mean you might be called a christian but you cannot be a born again <laughs> follower of jesus christ let's yes. call it that without believing knowing that he was raised from the dead. Hallelujah. That's the premise of our faith. Yeah. It's right. not going to church that's the premise of our faith. That's a result of our faith. The premise of our faith is that we believe that Jesus was yeah. raised from the dead yeah. by the glory of the Father, right? Yes. And by confessing Jesus Christ as Lord. That's the premise yeah. of Christianity. Yeah. That's what Christianity is all about. So the start of Christianity is supernatural. Yeah. So it should be easy for us to believe in it. I'm not saying it's always easy to walk in it. That's a different story. But before you walk in it, you have to believe in it. Yeah. Amen. So you say, well, there's nothing else than resurrection because that sounds weird too. Mm. Right? Come on, let's be yeah. honest. Yeah. Right? For a sinner to hear that someone was raised from the dead, you're like, what? <laughs> I don't know if this is all true. When I read the Bible and I see that Jesus walked on the water, I believe it. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I don't think it. I know what happened. Right? Yeah, yeah. So then I'm like, yeah, why not? Why don't believe in miracles now? Why? And now once in a while, we should have this continually. And we need to grow in this. The problem is we believe that God needs to do it while he told us to do it. Yeah. So the church is good in whining and saying, oh, God, I want you to do this. Oh, please, Lord, do miracles. And he said, wait, what? You're asking me to do miracles while I told you to do that? Yeah. Yes. Come on. Yes. Because he just says. He just said in, in Matthew 10, verse 7, go and preach. And then he says, heal the sick. Not he healed the sick. You healed the sick, he Amen. said, right? Yeah. Uh -oh. yeah. He said, you cleanse the lepers. You raise the dead. And you cast out devils. Yeah. Right? Yes. Everything about God is supernatural. Amen. Okay, so to establish and build something new is hard. For a, a, a rocket, for a spaceship to lift off the earth, the most fuel is being used just in the few couple of feet yeah. that it needs to get off the ground. Yeah. Yeah. Right? To get something off the ground is so hard. I know how hard it can be to start a new work, to start a new church. Right? I know it can be very hard and very tough. That's why you get certain people to do these kind of things. And you cannot just give up. But there is certain things that we can learn. If we want revival, for example, then we will have to pray and not just say, Lord, give us revival. We have to learn to break through in yes. prayer. If we want unity, then we have to love. And if we want to reach our goal, then we have to agree with the vision. So if you want the church to become successful, you will have to start agreeing with the vision that's being preached. Right? So when pastors preach vision, right, you have a choice. Are you going to follow that vision? I believe that we are in the middle of warfare. And I believe that we will win this war, that we will enlarge our tent, and that we will expand our yeah. territories. Amen. This move that we are about to enter is a supernatural move. Yeah, it is the move of glory that you are part of, you are called to be part of. Amen. And to be effective, there are a few things that we need to do. When I, I look at the book of Nehemiah, which is a book of building and a book of restoration. Yeah. Right? I love the book of Nehemiah, especially when you're building a work, when you're building a church, when you're building a business, when you're building a marriage. It's good to read the book of Nehemiah. It's a book of building and a book of restoration. Now, when you read that book, it is very clear that you need to have a focused vision. 
When you read Nehemiah, I don't have time to go through the whole book, but it's clear that they had a vision of what they want to accomplish. So what do you want to accomplish? It's very important that you set out what you want to accomplish. In the days of old, it was the pastor and a few around him that would have to carry out the vision, but that's old wine. Yeah. That's old wine. New wine is that we all carry the load. That's new wine. Amen. New wine is that we carry the glory. We do the work. Right? I spoke, I think it was, I think it was with you, right? That I spoke about the pastor in, in well, I can't say that now because I was being recorded. A pastor in Belgium somewhere, right? That we were invited to preach. This is a number of years ago when they still had overhead projectors. You know what overhead projector is? Yeah. Right? Okay, so this this pastor, he uh, did wasn't only the pastor of the church, he also played the piano and he sang the praise and worship. Right? So he would sing the song and then he would get up from the piano. And then he would change the sheet on the overhead projector. And then he would walk back to his piano and start playing again. And then when it's time for offering, he does his little sermonette on, 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 on the offering, right? The by itself was very good. But then he also takes the basket and he goes to everybody in the church. Okay, this is the old picture I have of how work in ministry is done. Is that everything is done by one person. That is not what God intended. Amen. That is not a body. You know, so though my eyes are very visionary, they can't get a hold of anything. They can see very well, but they can't grab a hold of anything. I need my hands for that, right? So which is more important, my eyes or my hands? I can't make a choice. They're both important, and they both need to do their job. So to build a successful church or marriage or business, you all need to do your part. I'm not going to mention marriage and business anymore. You know what I'm talking about, right? So now I'm going to just going to talk about church. If you want this church to be successful, you'll you'll all have to start carrying a load. That's with prayer, but also with certain jobs that need to be done in the church. That's the vision that needs to be executed. It's no longer the will of God that God only works through a few anointed people. Yeah. All right. Now, we will always have certain functions. Like I'm not insecure about who I am in my house. I know that I'm the husband and I know that I am the father. That doesn't make me the boss. That makes me responsible for a certain set of things. Right. Yeah. So I'm very focused on what I need to do. And my wife is focused on what she needs to do. Doesn't make me better than her. No, it makes me having a different function. Same thing in the church. I'm not called to do everything. It also doesn't mean that I'm better. No, there's a lot of people that are better in a lot of things. But I have been called to use the microphone. Yeah. <laughs> no, seriously. So that's my function. It doesn't make me better, but I know my role. That's it. So I don't see myself as better. Everybody has their role. I am anointed for what I'm called to do. But I believe there's many people that are more talented, more gifted in certain areas than I am. Actually, many areas in my church, they, they know it. I don't have many talents. I don't have many. I only have a very, very few. You know, there's very few talents that I have. And I'm, it doesn't mean I'm not talking down on myself. I just know myself. There's not much I can do. But what I do, I do with all my heart. It's that simple. Yeah. Now, the story of Nehemiah, um, I can't tell you the whole background of Nehemiah, but Nehemiah has a desire to rebuild the wall because he hears that the walls around the city of Jerusalem are all torn down. So, right, that's kind of like the church in England, yeah, that's right? That's the church in the West. The walls, the walls have been broken down yeah. and nobody is doing anything about it. There's still, still people living there, but there's no walls. There's no walls. The city has no influence and the city has no defense. So Nehemiah, even though he lives afar, he has a desire to build it. And and the king at that time, you know where he was, yeah. right? He says, is this a good idea what you're doing? Yeah, I know what I'm doing. This needs to be done. And the king even helps him to fulfill the vision. Yeah. Yeah. It's not the vision of the king, but the king had such respect for Nehemiah. He says, okay, go do your thing. Right, so that's a little bit of the background story. Nehemiah chapter uh, chapter two, verse ten. It says, "When Sanballat the Horonite and Tobiah the servant the Ammonite heard of Nehemiah trying to rebuild the wall, it grieved them exceedingly." So they were not happy. There's always people that are not happy. There, when 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 you want to build something, when you're building a church, there's always people that are not happy. There's always people that will criticize you, and 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 criticism. Uh, they're knives, they're arrows, right? We say, ah, it's, it's, it, it doesn't mean much. No, it means a lot. Criticism yeah. can be deadly, yes. right? And, and you, can, you can carry a load. I'll talk about this later again. But it's amazing that these guys, they start criticizing, criticizing 
Right? They start criticizing. They were not very happy. They were grieved that there came a man to seek the welfare of the children of Israel. So there will always be people that don't like what you're doing. But our rep response should be clear. In Nehemiah 2 verse 20. Then answered I them and I said unto them, The God of heaven, he will prosper us. Amen. Therefore we his servants will arise and build. Oh, but you have no portion nor right, nor memorial in Jerusalem. Yep. Mm, yep. So with that, he staked his claim. He put a flag in the ground and he said, okay, whatever, you said something, but we're going to build anyways. Yeah. Right? Yeah. We're not going to back down. We're not going to go back. We're not going to say, oh, let's try to convince you. Well, we're building. We know what we need to do. And that's yeah. it. Yeah. So the enemy is cunning. He's not very wise. He is yeah. cunning. The enemy uses the same tactics over and over. My wife and I found out, I, I'm not going to talk about these tactics now, but I'm going to talk about some of them, you know, but uh, 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 there's always the same tactics that he keeps recycling. So he, he does number one, then number two, number three, number four, number five, and then a lot of times he starts over again because he's not that wise. He'll just do the same thing over and over again. He just changes the people that he uses. He does the same thing, maybe changes the words a little bit, but it's the same thing over and over again. And especially if you fail in one area, then he knows which one to get. That's why you need to become strong in the area that you've been attacked in, because I can guarantee you he's going to try to attack there again. Yeah. It's a breach in the wall. That's, That's why we're talking That's about good, walls, because yeah. you will need to build your walls. Yeah. Yeah, That's, so That's the prophetic word, right? Yeah. You're going to need to uh, build a prophetic wall. The enemy uses the same tactics over and over us, uh, over and over against us to stop us from having revival and stopping us from building a successful work. Nehemiah chapter 4 verse 1. These next few verses and especially verse 2, you need to remember. You need to know them, you need to write them down, and you need to ponder these things. It came to pass, Nehemiah 4 verse 1. That when Sambalat heard that we build that we are building the wall, he was very angry, and he took great indignation, and he mocked the Jews. This is what the enemy does a lot. He mocks people. Yeah. So most probably, this is not because I am a prophet. You have been mocked. Yeah. Amen. All right. Yeah. So I can guarantee you. I can guarantee you if you've spent any time in leadership. You've been mocked. So pastors, I don't need to be prophetic. If I would say, oh, you were, you were mocked, right? Oh, they, they, you're not prophetic. That's just common sense. You have been mocked, especially when you start something. You you will be mocked. They were. He was mocking the Jews. Yeah. Then verse 2, listen, because you need to remember this. This is the rest of the message. He spake before his brethren and the army of Samaria, and he said, what do these feeble Jews do? Remember that. Will they fortify themselves? Will they sacrifice? Will they make an end in a day? Will they revive the stones out of the heaps of the rubbish which are burned? These five things I'll be talking about. Now Tobiah the Ammonite was by him. And he said, even that which they built. If a fox go up, he shall even break down their stone wall. That's exactly what the enemy does, right? This is mocking again. He goes back to mocking. He says, wow, even if a British fox will jump on that wall, it will just all come tumbling down. It will mock your work. It won't amount to anything. It won't. You won't reach anything. You're not going to be successful. It's never going to work. That's the idea that he wants to put in your mind. Verse 4. Oh, hear, oh God, for we are despised. And that's how you feel. You feel that you are despised, <laughs> that you're not honored. It's normal for us to be honored. Not to demand honor, but to be honored. Yeah. Right? He says, hear, oh God, for we are despised. And turn their reproach upon their own head and give them for a prey in the land of captivity. So what I said, this is a message about building in the kingdom of God. It's talking about what's going to happen when we start building or rebuilding in a church. But also, as I said, in other parts of our life. The enemy delights or should I say he likes to for us to just sit in the corner. To wait and hope for a blessing. Yeah. He will mock us. He will intimidate us. He will put pressure on us. He wants us to feel like we're in the pit. And some of you, you're like, exactly, that's where I am. His purpose is to stop us. Yeah. Nehemiah first, 
chapter 4, verse 11 says, And our adversary said, They shall not know, neither see, till we come in the midst among them and slay them and cause the work to cease. Yeah. So this is what it's doing. They want to sow fear, so you'll stop working. Mm -hmm. That's why it's important. The first night, we broke fear. <coughs> because it is important. We, we should not be afraid. Whatever. You know, in, in Holland, they need to... Every commercial that's about... Uh, investing, they need to put a line in. Uh, I, I don't know if they do that here too. That any results that that, that they made in the past is not a guarantee. a guarantee for the future. Do they have a law like that here? Yeah, right. Do. So okay. So but it's, it's the other way around. Also, just because you were attacked in the past, just because you failed in the past, doesn't mean you're going to fail again. Yeah. And this is what the enemy yeah. wants you to think. Yeah. He reminds you of your failures. He reminds you of what you cannot do, what you had a hard time in before. And that's how he wants to stop you. It's like a self-fulfilling prophecy that people are afraid of failure. And because they are afraid to fail, they don't even start. And if you don't start, you fail. It's a self-fulfilling prophecy. Yeah. Yeah. Right? So when we start building, the enemy will come with his attacks. And he will come to bring doubts. The enemy, the devil, he comes with his attacks and his challenges. To stop our progress. Because God wants progress. This weekend is all about progress. It's about cutting ties to the past. This morning too. Even though it's not the same. It's not delivering seminar. It's cutting ties to the past. Everything that held you back. That stopped you from being successful. And that's two parts. There needs to be anointing for you to move forward. But it also needs to be a choice for you to say. No more. Amen. I am not going to give in to these tactics of the enemy. I know how the devil works. Yes. I've been doing this for a while and I see that he does the same thing over and over and over again. And we keep falling for the same yeah. junk. And we receive the criticism that people give us. Now, I believe we should all be humble, but it shouldn't get to us. So, right, so when I get criticized, right, I don't like it, but then I start investigating. Is there truth to this what they said? Right? It also depends on who says it, because I tell my church, I don't open myself to everyone. Not everyone has a right to speak into my life. Right. Yeah. Obviously, my wife, she's my wife, my kids. Right. I most probably my 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 spiritual father. Right? There's other people that I allow to speak in my life on a level that I will really listen to them. But I don't open to my, myself to all the garbage that people have to say about me. Forget this. Now, I, I can listen, but it depends on how it's being said to me. Right? Amen. Sorry, it's getting quiet now. Oh. That's all right. Preach. Yeah, it's okay. I'm just tell I'm telling you, this yeah, is my right. This is my life. Amen. Right? Amen. And some people they think they have the right to say everything. You don't. I give you the right to say Amen. something. Amen. Right now, yes. to your brother, you can say whatever you want. To your mom, you you figure that out. That's none of my business. But to me, I decide what I hear. Amen. You say, Amen. yeah, but I have a right of free speech. Yeah, and I have a right to free here. <laughs> this is my castle. Amen. Right? Right? Yeah. Amen. I've given this to the Lord, and the Bible says that I need to protect my heart above all things. Amen. Yeah. Yes. For out of it flow the issues of life. And I don't want my heart to be full of garbage. Amen. But I don't, now, I listen to criticism, but it depends who it comes from. Amen. Right? So, and yeah, it's, yeah, I know it's constructive criticism, but I need to know. I don't, I don't listen to the words per se that are being spoken. I listen for what kind of goal they are spoken. Because a lot of times we just utter criticism. But I want to know that those people are actually for me. Why am I going to listen to people that are not for me anyways? They're not building with me anyways. Yeah. They've never been, uh, been positive to me. They don't sow into our ministry. They don't sow into our church. Seriously, you think I'm going to listen to anyone in the church that has criticism? That's not given anything to the church? Forget that. I'm listening to you. Not because you're a bad person. But obviously, God didn't call you to me. It's okay. You're not a bad person. But you're not called to be an influence in my life. It's that simple. Uh -huh. Now, don't get me wrong. I am very open. And I love listening to people because I want to keep changing. So I do listen to criticism if I know that those people are for me. Like I know that my wife is for me. Yeah. Because she's stuck to me. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever she does to me, she does to herself. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Same thing with my kids. Same thing with my natural father or my brother and sister. Right? Brothers and sisters, they will pull you down. My wife too. So you know, if I think that I'm in glory, hallelujah, I am in the... You know, whatever heaven there was, whatever. And if I'm in third heaven, my wife will pull me down real quick. Yeah. <laughs> right? 
Yeah. So, 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 you, so you will just show me the facts of life. Like, oh, yeah. so if, if people come, oh, that was the best sermon I ever heard. Whoa, such an anointing. My, my wife will sit in the car and she says, meh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All of a sudden, I'm like, okay, I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. <laughs> There's no room for me to get arrogant there. There's no room. That's all right. So, but the enemy, he keeps coming with these same dumb challenges every time. God didn't bring you here just to receive a blessing. He brought you here to be trained, to be part of this movement, and to take yes. this nation for yeah. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Right? No longer are we a lion without teeth. Yeah. Right? We're not a lion without teeth. Yeah. When I see the church in Europe and in England, then I think about the book of Nehemiah. The walls are broken down. The yeah. gates are burned yeah. down with fire. That's the condition of the yeah. church. Amen. Our walls need to be rebuilt. Yeah. The walls in our personal lives need to be rebuilt and the walls of our churches need to be rebuilt. Right? So the walls in our personal life, they 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 cause for a lot of stuff to come into our life that, that shouldn't be there. Yeah. Sin, yes, but also a lot of stuff that people can do to us that normally they wouldn't be able to do because we build walls around our lives. I don't mean a wall around your heart, but a wall around your life that is a biblical kind of wall, right? That prevents the enemy of penetrating. Yeah, yeah. That's why there was walls in a city. That's why when a wall is breached, we need to stand in the gap, which is intercession. Yeah. So the Bible tells us when we pray in tongues, we are building a wall, right? Or building a house. And I'll, I'll talk about that probably later, but let me move on quickly so we don't, um, we don't have a problem with our time. Five challenges that the enemy came with, right? In verse 2. So verse 2 it was the most important verse. And those five things that are mentioned in, in verse 2, I am going to mention again. Number one, the number one attack of the devil. He said, what do these feeble Jews do? The devil will always attack and saying that you are too weak. That you will fail. That you are not good enough. Right. Yeah. That you will not make it. That you will yeah. not have any success. You're too stupid. You're yeah. too ugly. Whatever will bring insecurity. That's the first tactic of the devil in anything. Yeah. I even see it in marriages. Yeah. 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 You guys are not going to make it. And that's why people give up. Yeah. They don't even build anymore. right? Or churches that fold after a few months. Or a business. Right? So you have to understand that this is the first tactic of the devil. This is to sow fear into you. And the worst is when we start repeating what the devil says. Yeah, yeah. And many Christians do this. So the problem is, so he says, what are these feeble Jews do? What do they think? Right? That's, that's kind of the question. Who do you think you are? You weak, you weak person. That's, that's that line. Who do you think you are? Who do you think you are? You think you're going to be successful? Yeah. Right? You think you're going to make it? You think you're good enough? What? Are you arrogant? When you're a feeble Jew. You're a feeble believer. Who do you think you are? You think you're going to make it? And then we start saying, yeah, I don't know if I'm going to make it. I don't know if I'm good enough. We start repeating what the enemy says. Don't repeat what the enemy yeah, says. Man. Repeat what God said. Yeah. Not how you feel. My feelings lie to me all the time. Right. Yeah. I don't speak out what I feel. I speak out what I read in the Bible. Yes. Right? Yes. So I don't believe that I'm a conqueror because I feel that everything is working out perfectly in my life. No, I know that I'm a conqueror because yeah. he said so. Yeah. Because God said, let there be light. And guess what? What happened? Light. Really? Mm. It says that God spoke and it was there, right? So when God said to me, you are more than a conqueror, guess what I said? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. I believe it. He said, light, there was light. He said, conquer, there was conquer. And that's how you need to see it. Only because he said so, not because I feel it. Because he said so. I am a warrior because he said so. Amen. I'm a success because he said so. Amen. I'm born again because he said so. I'm a son of God because he said so. I'm righteous because he said so. I'm holy because he said so. Yes. I'm powerful because Amen. he said so. Amen. I am not going to fail because the Bible says that he who began a good work in me will also complete it. Amen. So when the, when the devil comes and says you will fail, I will not fail. Yeah. I'm not a failure. I'm not a born failure. I'm a born success. Jesus Christ is, in, is on the inside of me. I am dead to myself. Christ is alive in me. I am in Christ. Christ is in me. I mean, 
I am more than a conqueror. I'm the head and not the tail. I will go up only. I will never go down. This is what God said about me. This is what I will repeat. And a lot of times, you have to say this often because your mind is filled with all the negative junk. Yeah. Yeah. If you're like me, right? So especially when we started, oh my gosh, we got every, we heard pretty much everything. All right? Actually, people, literally, not people, a person, called me Hitler. Actually, that was easy. That was very easy for me because they actually called me a false prophet. This is the beginning of the ministry, ministry and they called me a false prophet. And that actually made me think. But then they said, you're you're like Hitler. And I'm like, OK, I'm done. Why? Because I studied I studied the Second World War and I studied Hitler. And I said, anybody that compares anybody with Hitler is a stupid person. So anybody in Britain that compares President Trump with Hitler, don't ever, 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 ever listen to them anymore because they're not worth your time. Yes, they are absolutely stupid because Hitler killed six million Jews and then six million others. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, so don't uh, anybody ever been to Auschwitz? Oh, you should go to Auschwitz. You can feel death and you can feel what they did there. Right. So never let anyone compare unless they did the same thing as Hitler did. So a Stalin, you can compare to Hitler. Yeah. But nobody alive right now is doing what Hitler did. So that's why it's stupid to make these kind of comparisons. So actually, when they accuse me of being Hitler, they're like, well, that's easy. Because I know I'm not. I'm not a murderer. I'm not a killer. I'm a lover of people. I love people. I might do a lot of things wrong, but that stuff I never do. So it was actually very easy for me. Now, that's 20 years ago, so you know, it's far behind me. But this is the accusations that the enemy will bring. The problem is that oftentimes we're way too passive in dealing with these attacks. We're like the criticism that other people give or the enemy give. And I don't want you to be arrogant or closed-minded because you do need to listen to the opinions of other people. It just yes. depends who do you listen to. Yes. Right? Amen. So d- don't close yourself off to, to feedback. I love what, what Pastor Paul did. Pastor Paul came to me for feedback. I love that when you give, are able to give feedback to one another. Right? That's a good thing. Because then you can correct each other on small things if it's necessary. But it doesn't mean that someone is against you. Amen. You know that that person is for you. Amen. Right? I am prophesying to you that you will not fail. Yes. He who began a good work will complete it. You will Amen. not fail. Amen. The devil hates spiritual entrepreneurs. They can pull themselves up by their bootstraps. He doesn't like that. He likes Christians to lay down and whine, God, he ain't coming to help me. Get up. Amen. Arise. Yes. Arise. Yes. Arise. Yes. That's what needs to happen. You must arise. Pick yourself up. Right? The devil loves lazy people. He loves spiritually lazy people. He loves them. Yes. Because they're no threat to him. Yeah. It's one accusation and they're done. And he can move on to another group of people that he wants to stop. I have to move on. I could say a lot more about one, but you know what I mean, right? You can put any negative remarks of the enemy in here. It's not even just ideas of other people, but ideas that you put in your own mind. That you will never succeed, that you will fail or whatever. Don't listen to stupid people. Don't listen to stupid people. Don't listen to what people from old have told you. Especially if they told you that before you were born again, now you're born again. You're going to be a success. You are a new creature. Right. Number two, will they fortify themselves? <laughs> okay. Another translation says, will they commit themselves to God? But I like, I actually like, will they fortify themselves? Or another, uh, another translation of that is, will they make themselves strong? Yeah. So the first one is, what are these weak people going to do? Two, are they going to make themselves strong? So it's mocking again, like they're going to make themselves strong. And this is the problem. A lot of Christians don't work on their own personal inner uh, inner man they don't make their inner man strong on That's purpose right. so, yeah. you have to make your spirit man strong yeah. you're not like, like so when you get born again you are a perfect baby but a perfect baby is not going to win the strong man car contest no. you understand right he's a perfect baby because he looks perfect for a baby he's perfect but he still needs to grow he yeah. needs to become mature right so the bible says that when we pray in tongues for example that we build our house Amen. or kadomio we are building our spiritual house so yeah. that's why it's important to pray in tongues not to have a message in tongues for your brother but build up your own personal life Amen. by praying in tongues and i always Amen. tell people how do you want to build your life how do you you know you know the, the story of the three piglets yeah. Yeah. right they right and you have the first one and they, he builds a house of straw and the second one he builds a house of wood and the third one builds a house of brick right what do you want i have jokes about this but now i'm sorry i don't have time for the joke so 
I think it's taste along. But but so but but I mean which pig would you want to be? Would you want to be number one, number two, or number three? <laughs> number three? No, you don't want to be a pig. So don't <laughs> no, 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 no. No, 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 no. You don't want to be a pig. But I understand what you're saying. I'm sorry, I'm messing with you. But yes, we want to be like the third pig that at least we build a strong house, right? But but that takes time. The first one wanted to go out and play. The one that made his house a straw. He wanted to go out and play. Yeah. So he had all the time to play because he just threw up some straw and that was it. That that reminds me of so many Christians. They just want to go, go out and play. They just want to enjoy, but they're not building their life strong. They're doing some things. That's why Europeans love worship and don't like praise. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Right. They, love, they love this. Sorry, I'm European, huh? so don't get upset with me. I'm American too, so I, it's nice. I, I'm just not a brick, but sorry. <laughs> Actually, who knows? <laughs> who knows? I might be somewhere in my bloodline. I have no idea. It's Hendrix. My name is Hendrix. So, all right. So this is what Christians do. Yeah. Hello, where, that's why we love worship because we like being lazy a little bit and we sit down, sometimes kneel or even lie flat. I do too, by the way. So I'm not mocking it, but we love this because we don't have to do anything. When it's time for praise, we think we're more spiritual than other people. But when it's time to dance, shout, we say, no, I don't do that because I'm British. <laughs> we don't do that. That's why in certain parts of the world, they have greater breakthrough than we do. Yeah, because they yeah. know how, what it is to praise. Yes. African churches, oh, Lord, they know how to praise. Oh, yeah. They will get wild. And you need that to have breakthrough. That's why I'm telling the, the people with an African background in the church, don't become white. That's right. <laughs> yes. 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 We need no, seriously, we need your excitement. Look, and I, I am married, I am married to, to an Asian. So, right, for me, no one is better. No, every culture has certain things that are good and certain things that are not so good. But white people, they have become generally so reserved and we need that wildness, go out, dance, jump, woohoo! You know, go, yeah. Woo yeah, whatever, right? <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, I mean, you know, whistle, jump, shout, run. I don't care, but express yourself. It doesn't have to look pretty. That's not what it is about, right? It is about that you learn to express yourself. These pray, the praise is very important for us to make ourselves strong. The praying in tongues. Okay, so you have three houses. You got the house of straw, the house of wood, and the house of brick. This is what a lot of Christians do. This is how they pray. So normally I wouldn't do this, but I'm giving an example, right? So they. Okay, nice. That's straw right there. That's right. Come on. That's straw right there. I do it when I walk in a grocery store. Yeah. That's how I pray when I go in the grocery store, right? Because I don't like grocery stores, so I just start praying. <laughs> right? You can do this anytime. It doesn't cost any energy. But if you want to build, I don't want to build a straw house. What I want to build is a castle. Yes. I don't want to build an impenetrable yes. fortress yes. that the enemy cannot come into. And I've been to places, you probably have them here, where you have these old old castles they have bricks that are like this side they're, yeah. they're not bricks they're boulders yeah this they're not boulders yeah. they're pebbles yeah. so you can build your house with pebbles and you're going to be done quick but if you want to build with boulders it's going to be people say you're doing warfare Huh? No, I'm building my fortress. Hey. I'm not doing any warfare yet. I didn't even get to it yet. I'm just building my fortress. I'm building myself strong. But people, they don't have the stamina to pray like this. They pray like this for two minutes and they, oh, I just feel I need to worship. Yeah, that's what you feel and that's not what God said. You're being led by your emotions, by your feelings, because you're used to being, please forgive me, but weak. Yeah, comfortable, right? So don't get me wrong because worship is important and necessary. But it's not the only part. We also need to pray strong. So a lot of times when I went to when I went to Africa, their praise was loud and strong. Worship they were not so great at. Here, here, our praise stink. Not here, not here. Okay, but here in the West, right, our praise stinketh. That's right. <laughs> but our worship is deep. Well, it looks deep. It's not always deep. We just pretend. We just... Oh, yeah, 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 look. Okay. So, in our prayer, same way. We need to be bold in our prayer. We need to be strong in our prayer and learn to make our lives strong. So that's with 
prayer, but it's also with the word. Are you doing something to make your life strong? Because the next time the big enemy comes, so when the enemy comes with sickness, he comes to you. What do you tell him? This is what I hear people say. Oh, Lord, you know, I'm a Christian. I'm your son. I love you. How come I'm sick? How come I have the flu? Hey, did you build your castle or what? Because I build a castle, and if I see that the enemy is in front of my gate, I will throw something down from the walls. Amen. There's going to be, I was going to say tar and feathers, but that's not how you do it. You do tar and then fire. Right. <laughs> yeah, boiling hot oil or boiling water or arrows or something, but some, maybe rocks, I don't care, but something is going to be thrown on the enemy, right? But that's not what Christians do. They open the gate and they say, Come because it's a polite thing we do. Oh. He's trying for this is a polite thing that we try to right? do. Oh, just come in and we let leave the enemy in. No, you need to tell the flu when it's knocking the door. No, go for me. I'm not susceptible to sickness by his stripes. I'm healed. I command every weakness and every sickness to go for me. I break its power. I command you to go. Leave now in Jesus' name. That's how I deal with sickness. I'm 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 never sick. I'm never sick. What I mean is sickness tries to attack me. But in 99 of the 100 cases, that same day, I have victory. Same day. I don't go to bed with any of that junk. In these 24, 25 years that I've been a Christian, right, I, I, I can definitely count on one hand, I mean probably half a hand, that, that, that it didn't work within one day. Because I do not receive it. Amen. It's not my part. The Amen. third thing in verse 2 is that he said, will they sacrifice? Gosh, I have the same problem. I need to hurry up again. Um, will they sacrifice? So the first is, what are these feeble Jews going to do? Second, right, that we just talked about. And then now three is, will they sacrifice? If you want to build something worthwhile, you will sacrifice. You will sacrifice your energy. You will sacrifice your time, right? And you will sacrifice money. It will cost you money. Any businessman will tell you to start a business will cost you money. And many people, they don't want to start something um, uh, because they say, yeah, but it's going to cost me. I just want to wait first until I receive. That's never going to happen. You have to sow before you will reap. And this wall is going to take a lot of energy and a lot of finances. Yeah. It's going to take a lot of money. So, And somehow in the West, we've been bamboozled. We've been thinking that talking about money is a bad thing. Oh, all he wants is my money. I don't want your money. I don't need your money. Do it, does it look like I need your money? Wow, you're not saying anything. Does it look? <laughs> okay, let me do it different. Does it look? <laughs> Maybe my suit is not expensive enough, but does it look I'm going hungry? That's not why I'm saying it. But it will cost money. If you want to build a, a church that's going to have impact, it will cost sacrifice, time, energy, money. It's that simple. It will it will take a sacrifice, right? It will take every time when we talk about money, people they just somehow they shut down. Yeah. But this is why you're poor. Yeah. Yeah. It's because it starts with a poverty mentality. There is plenty. Don't tell me there's not enough money. There's more than enough money. Yeah. Then John Amagini years ago he calculated how much money there was in the world, and there is more than enough money to make every man, woman, and child millionaire in the world. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. I don't believe in socialism, so that's why we have to go out and get it. Amen. They shouldn't have to share it. We need to have to make it. Amen. Right? So, but anyways, if we want to be successful, we have to learn how to sow. Also financially. That's not what I'm talking about. Well, we also need to learn that. It's sacrificial giving. Sacrifice is giving more than what you feel comfortable with. Yeah. Right? So it's doing more. That's sacrifice. That's when you feel it. You need to feel it. You need to feel that you gave your time, that you gave your energy, that you gave your finances to make sure that the vision is being fulfilled. Are we going to build the wall together or do we expect it from one or two other people? It takes all of us. Yeah. Right? The fourth one is will they make an end in a day? This is a dumb one. This is the enemy comes with this. So he says, will they sacrifice? <laughs> You're not going to put any energy. You're not going to put any money. And then the fourth thing he's going to do is, will you finish today? What a dumb question. No. I don't have to finish today. Amen. Why do I have to finish today? But he says this. 
This is what, that's why the Bible says don't despise the day of small beginnings because people say, oh, it's not good enough yet. Who says it needs to be good enough now? You need to be progressing. You need to be moving forward. Of course the wall is not going to be finished in one day. This is going to take time to build up this thing, to build a vision, to build a church. It could take seven years for you to be established that principalities in this, in, this, in this territory, right? They're not even woken up yet. And then you have to, you have to prove you have a right to exist. Amen. They've been here for ages, right? So you have to prove the right to exist. That's right. It's not going to happen overnight, but it's <laughs> stupid. Who says it needs to be overnight? It's yeah. not how you start. It is how you finish yeah. something. Yeah. It is not just important that you start. It's important that you finish. For example, okay, what's a famous boxer in England? Andy Cooper. Cooper? Anthony Every, everybody knows them? Yeah. Anthony Joshua's the new on the block. Okay, whatever. I don't know all these names, so I mean, I know Mike Tyson. Yeah. Anybody know Mike Tyson? Yeah. That guy was a beast in his heyday. <laughs> Muhammad Ali, yeah. right? Or. <laughs> yeah. Sonny Liston. Klitschko. Sonny Liston. Don't know him. Or is that is that like from the 30s? <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't matter. Anyways, just picture. Just picture, right? The the best boxer ever, whoever that is for you, Cooper, right? Doesn't matter, right? So can you imagine him and I are standing in the ring and I challenge him to a fight. I say, hey, you bozo. Wait, okay, I can't take Cooper. How old, how old is Cooper? Yeah, so that's the problem. I can't fight with him because, yeah. So who's the new one? Anthony Joshua. Joshua. So Joshua, probably a big guy. Yeah, big. Probably a big guy, not a skinny guy like me. No, no. <laughs> so, so he's a big guy, right? He's a big, strong guy. And then, and then I challenge him to a fight. I can start the fight. You think I can finish? <laughs> I think he's gonna finish. It's not a problem for me to tell to tell you that I will swim. From England to America. Yeah. It's very easy. It's very easy to say that and it's very easy to begin. I can start swimming, correct? Yeah. But I won't finish it. So the point is that we need to not not finish today. We need to have a goal to where we are going. Yeah. Yeah. Let me finish quickly so I can pray for people. All right, number five. This is to me the first one and the fifth one are the most important. So listen carefully. Will they revive the stones? Out of the heaps of rubbish, rubbish which are burned. So can we revive the stones? Can we revive what the devil has done? Because the devil has burned the wall. Can we revive these stones? Can we use that which was wrong? Can we use what the devil has damaged to build something up again? So listen carefully because some of you are missing it. Because this is what God is saying. Can you use what the devil has taken from you? Can you use... The damage that God has brought to your life to build a new wall. So when people are, are throwing stones at you, don't throw the stones back. You need to say, thank you. This will go very nicely right there. You need those stones. You need those bricks. Everything that the devil throws at you, don't throw it back. Build your wall. It doesn't matter. The wall doesn't have to be pretty. Maybe it looks burnt, but it will be strong. It will protect you against the enemy. So you have to build your wall, right? Yeah. Can you use again what the devil has used against you? I believe you can because God says he will work all things to work for our good. Can you take what was bad, what was wrong, what was destroyed and make something useful out of it? This is important. This is, an, this is a very important question. So today, you have a choice. Do you say, especially the, the first one, is, is can you close yourself off to all the negative junk that the enemy brings to you? Right? The fifth one is all the junk from the past. Can you do something with it now? Yeah. Because most people, they get bitter or they get weaker because of criticism, because of the challenges that they went through. But you need to say, no, I will use this to build upon. Amen. Right? And Isaiah 61 verse 3 it says to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, yes. that it might be called the trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that they might be glorified. Amen. If God is for me, then who can be against me? And this is so important. We must war. We cannot relax. We cannot relax. We have to fight this battle. 
So I want to pray for you. I know we don't have much time, so we're going to do this quickly again. Uh, probably the way we did it yesterday, so then we can do it very, very quickly. Let's all stand to our feet. I believe that the Lord can do a quick work. Okay, so you need to remember these four, five points. So remember them or or buy the message, get the message on audio if you record it. Right? So then then get the message. By the way, after the service we have uh, we have CDs and books. We have a couple of books from Apostle Maldonado. So that will be great for you. Prayer books. They're really good books. So I encourage you to get those. We also have some anointed messages that can help you further in your spiritual life. Um, but it's important that you get this message because I believe when I was preparing for this trip, this was the prophetic message that God gave for the church, the prophetic message that God gave for the pastors. This is not what I prepared after what we talked. This is what I already had for a week. I knew this is what needs to be done. And that's why I recognize all the junk that the devil throws at you. I know what it's meant to do. It's meant to kill you. It's meant to destroy you. It's meant to stop you. And you need to use this, number five, you need to use this to start building walls, to make Amen. yourself strong, right? So all these things you need to do. So I want to pray that junk off of you, everything that has hindered you. I want to break that stuff off. Um... So let's see how we're going to do this. Um, okay. Can I have uh, some music in the background? I don't, again, I don't, want you, I don't want you to play, brother. Not because I don't like you playing. You know it, right? You know what I mean. No, seriously. This is important because I, li I like how he plays. I like what he breaks. But I just want you to be ministered to because I think that is also very important. So what I believe, I, I think this is sometimes we, it's very easy to criticize people that are in the limelight. Right, and, and, and that you criticize your pastors, that you say something about them, you should never do so because it doesn't help building the walls. Right? So it doesn't mean they do everything right or whatever, but you need to bless them, you need to pray for them, not not witchcraft prayers, not let them do what you want them to do, but just bless them in your prayer. Right? It's extremely important. It's so easy to criticize, and that's not what this is about, right? You need to build the church. So you are all called to build the church and, and you just bless them, you strengthen them. Because it's not easy. It's not easy to be in charge of building the walls. You see here what Nehemiah was up against. Right? Okay, everybody close your eyes. Who says, yeah, this was a message for me. I need help with this. Just raise your hand for a second. Okay? All right, we can handle that. Okay, if you have your hand raised up, then just come forward. We're going to pray quickly. Come, come, come. Okay, shoulder to shoulder. Find someone stand next to them, not behind them. Stand next to them. Okay, listen, sometimes maybe you are used to someone praying for a very long time for you. What I, I I'm gonna do this very, very quickly. You're gonna receive from him, from Jesus, yeah? So start praying already. Start praying already and start believing that you're gonna receive from him. If I prayed, after I prayed for you and you can, please go back to your seat so someone else can be prayed for, yeah? So as a church, I want you to raise your uh, raise your hands, stretch your hands to these people. Father, we break the weight off of these people that the devil has placed upon them. Father, all the junk of the world. Father, all the lies that the enemy has spoken, all the criticism that was spoken, we break it off. We break it off these people. We break it off these churches. We break it off these pastors, Father. Every negative word that the devil has spoken, we nullify it in Jesus' name. We thank you, Father. Every thought, we make it captive and bring it under the obedience of Jesus Christ. I thank you, Father, that these pastors are the appointed people to bring this work further, to bring this work higher, Father, in the name of Jesus. I thank you they will not fail but they will have success i thank you father their family will have success their family will have joy their family will have peace father in the name of jesus because it's as the anointing the oil that comes down from the beard of aaron upon the people lord in jesus name father therefore we start with them we bless them we break off every witchcraft that was aimed at them every wrongful prayer every prayer that was consumed on lust father that was prayed towards them that were spoken out as curses over them to control them to manipulate them 
We break its power in Jesus' name. We command them to be released from that. We command them to be released from any undue burdens in Jesus' name. Stuff that they're not supposed to carry. We break its power in the name of Jesus. We break its power and I command you to be free. I command you to be free from any of this witchcraft that was spoken over you, prayed over you. In the name of Jesus, I break its power in Jesus' name. I command you to be free from any burden in Jesus' name. I command you to be free. I command your family to be free in the name of Jesus. I command you to be free in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We thank you, Father, that we will not carry this weight and this burden anymore. In the name of Jesus, I break its power. I break its power. In the name of Jesus. I break its power in the name of Jesus. I break its power in the name of Jesus. I break its power in the name of Jesus. I break every lie. I break those lies in Jesus' name. It is a lie in the name of Jesus. You are not done. You are not done. You are not done. You are not done in Jesus' name. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Father. Father, I thank you, Father. I thank you, Father.